more about the Miami Heat guys. They, they beat up on, on the Rockets last night. Yep. And, and the, you know, yes, it was only a preseason game. But Tyler Hero has looked more like the player from the 2020 bubble. And Kyle Lowry, you know, was his usual self, just in a different uniform, taking charges in games that uh, don't matter. Here's Jimmy after the game on what he's seen so far. I think everybody's still getting a feel um, when the, each other's out there on the court where everybody's going to be, um, what they're going to do. We have some, you know, some careless turnovers, but it's just we haven't, we haven't played that much together. I think we can switch a lot. We got a lot of guys that can handle the ball, obviously put it in the basket. We play so much faster. Kyle's not afraid to throw the ball ahead of everybody, move the ball extremely well. And then like always, we got guys that can really shoot it. Ramona, are, are the Heat championship contenders as of right now? Well, uh, Zach Lowe does his, his general tiers every year. I don't think he, they belong in that championship tier, but I wouldn't be surprised at all if they make a run in the playoffs because that is a team that is built for a seven-game playoff series. They are going to be really good defensively. I think they, you know, obviously we know what Eric Spolster can do making adjustments, but they do have enough different looks that they can give you with the types of players they have now. We forget P.J. Tucker's on this team now. That is, to have P.J. Tucker and Bam out of bio is two very switchy guys who can guard a lot of positions. Um, Jimmy obviously can guard a lot of positions. I, that's, a, that's a really dangerous team in a seven-game series. I know they're going to defend. This is something that they've hung their hat on, then they picked up Tucker and, yep. and Lowry. The question is, can they score under pressure? And that's why the big thing for me for them is Tyler Hero. Is Tyler Hero going to be the guy of one year ago? This sounds so strange because yes. one year ago right now the NBA Finals are going on. Or is he going to be the guy of earlier this year when he was sort of just, you know, he put up decent numbers, but he wasn't a difference maker. If Tyler Hero is the same type of difference maker he was in the bubble, and even if he doesn't play those kind of stats, even if he just is that kind of playmaker, it elevates this Heat team to another level, especially offensively, because sometimes they end up getting stuck where they need offensive playmaking. And to me, even though he's not one of the uh, marquee guys on that roster, even though he's by salary probably like seventh or eighth, he is like arguably the most important player for the Heat because as he goes, as he lifts that team, their ceiling comes with him. And look, the Heat are getting a lot of props even before the season. According to the annual GM survey, Kyle Lowry was the most impactful offseason move. The Heat had the best offseason, and Spo was named the best coach. Brian, do you agree with those three? Well, I'll tell you one thing that general managers seem to like in this survey. They like it when you acquire veterans who play defense. If you go back <laughs> yes. and look, you know, you know, obviously if you acquire LeBron James or James Harden, you probably get uh, that nod as well. But if you get veterans who play defense, uh, those are the kind of guys you, you have that, that, that win at the highest level. And so the, the, the Heat picked up two of those guys and, you know, they, you know, completely changed their dynamic when you add two guys to that locker room. And they, you know, I know they had to give up Goran Dragic. It was not for free. But, you know, it's an upgrade to get a guy like Lowry. And, you know, there was a number of teams out there offering Kyle Lowry huge money. It wasn't just the Heat. And they kind of won one of the biggest um, derbies, if you will, for a free agent uh, this summer. And that was getting Kyle Lowry, getting him committed and making that deal happen. And so I totally get why the GMs see it that way. And look, Eric Spolster is now the second longest tenured head coach in the league behind Greg Popovich. He's extraordinarily respected. You know, that, that, that goes without saying whether this honor was bestowed on him or not. Yeah. The other big free agent signing, I guess he wasn't technically a free agent, but keeping Duncan Robinson, $90 million for Duncan Robinson. That's your, that's your sharpshooter out there. And the question, you know, when you, when you pay a young player, he was obviously undrafted and he worked his way through the heat system, heat culture, he's the definition of that. Does he change? Does he give you the same kind of Duncan Robinson-ness, right? He creates that gravity on the floor. I think with Dunk, um, I'll go back to a I'll go back to a fun Duncan Robinson story. When he was a rookie, he was hanging out with uh, Ryan Anderson, and you know they were trying to get him to upgrade his wardrobe, upgrade what he was wearing. He went and bought like a really fancy bag, a nice fancy leather bag. Um, he had it for a day or two. Felt kind of embarrassed, like this is not me. I just I just want to stick with my old the gym bag, and uh, returned it. <laughs> Just return the Louis Vuitton back. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. I appreciate that. The same uh, and we had this whole heat well conversation. Paid. We didn't even talk about Bam out of bio. Oh, that's right. Um, He's pretty good. That, that's a conversation for another day. <laughs> Regardless, the heat can mess around and, and disrupt the expectations out of the East.
Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.